Some people say that there's not enough talent coming through the Northeast. We're going to be taking a look at that today. We're speaking to Simon and Keith, who are coaches at North Shield Juniors, who have produced the likes of Matty Longstaff, Sean Longstaff, Lewis Cass, and Owen Bailey. So the first thing we look at is look at Newcastle's first team squad. There's only one Jordy in there, which is Paul Dummett. Where is the rest of them? Why are there not enough Geordies coming through? We asked Keith and Simon how a player is developed and progresses into a professional side. We don't necessarily contact Newcastle or Sunderland or Middlesbrough. Um, we play at certain venues. Um, we have a lot of games here on a, on a Sunday. We play on a Saturday as well. Um, and I, the scouts will go and work the network. They'll, they'll have a look at tables, who's playing where. Um, they'll have maybe five scouts looking at a certain age group, I believe. Uh, they'll take a name from a coach, say, we've spotted this lad, we'll take his name. If the name is produced a few times, they'll keep coming and watching it, and I believe that's how they progress through to, to academy. Is that right? Uh, well, basically, and it, it, ch it's ch it changes over time, yeah. So you will get a lot of the scouts that will come along and have a, have a, have a look at the, 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 guys, the guys playing. The, the Rays, uh, some of the scouts from some of the clubs will try and build a relationship with some of the coaches and with the club. Um, so if there is an opportunity where we say there's a player that is really outstanding, that deserves a chance to move on, then we can have a discussion with them as well and they'll come and watch them. Um, uh, from, from our perspective, if we think somebody's good enough, we'll push and push and push for them to, to, get, that, to get the opportunity. Earlier we spoke of these four players who progressed from North Shields in the Newcastle United Academy. Let's talk about these lads. Lewis Cass is a right back, recently turned 19. He's missed three months of injury this season, but he has progressed from the under 18s to the under 23s and the right back has a bright future ahead of him. The next man is Owen Bailey, who's 20 years of old. He's progressed to the under 23s and is currently captain of the squad. He's versatile, can play in central defence, but he's also played predominantly in defensive midfield this year. Owen recently captained the side which lost to Sunderland's first team in the Checker Trade Trophy and he spoke of his delight of that achievement. I think for the majority of players that'll be the most they've ever played in front of and uh, when you've got travelling fans like that obviously it's unbelievable. Uh, the noise all game, they didn't stop supporting and even when we're 4-0 down you can still hear them so credit to all them coming out because they didn't have to come you know it's only an under 21's game so uh, massive credit to them for coming out and watching me and supporting me. The next man is Matty brother of Sean who turns 19 in March. He's played a key role again progressing from the under 18s to the under 23s playing in set midfield this season and scored from a direct free kick in the Czech trade win over Grimsby's first team. He spoke recently of his progression and so did his dad a former Great Britain legend hockey player. Imagine it's any dad's dream to watch his son walk out for and play for Newcastle's first team so to, to watch Sean do that it was it was like some of the interviews I've put out already, it was an emotional night and it was just fantastic. Uh, obviously, Matty's coming through the ranks and keeping his head down and working hard, so uh, fingers crossed for him. You know, I tend to play deeper, so obviously it'll probably be a dream if it ended up happening, but if it did, it, it would be unreal. This year, the 23s, obviously we've done well in quite a lot of the competitions, but obviously we just, i just got to keep working hard, see what, see what the next couple of years brings and hopefully try and do what he's done. It's, it's the best thing to do in the world. You get to go and kick a football around with your friends. And of course the big one is Sean Longstaff who many would have tipped if it wasn't because of his recent injury would have either been called up to the England under 21 or even the full national side. Sean is talking next where he was developing as himself as a youngster with North Shields. I was playing at North Shields, um, I think I probably started when I was four or five maybe. I started in the in the indoor league at Wall's End and um, obviously Progressed to just playing for I think I think I was under sevens or eights. I got scouted by Newcastle and went into the sort of development programs. And uh, I think you signed properly at under nine. So I've I've been at Newcastle since I've nine. So it's it's been a long journey and um, obviously to go from under nine through every gate or through every age group into the first team has has been amazing. We'll be touching on Sean's progression more in just a moment. But everybody at North Shields must be bursting with pride seeing how well these four lads are developing at Newcastle. And when we see 
the likes of, of Sean and Matty and Lewis and Owen that are, that are doing so well at Newcastle United at the moment. It fills everybody with that pride. You know, we can't claim to have made them great players. We'd like to do that, yeah. yeah but yeah. they had natural ability and they came here. We were fortunate enough for them to be here and to see them playing um, at the standard they're playing at and Sean in particular now the first player, to, you know, local player to go and play in the Premier League which just fills us all with absolute pride to be absolutely honest. Huge, huge pride. Um, love seeing them do so well, especially when we, we know these people as well and they're such grounded, um, great, great kids um, and they deserve everything they're getting at the minute, you know. You mentioned earlier on in the video that there's a lack of talent coming through or is it a case of them not getting the chances in the first team? How would the local kids feel when they see these lads doing so well with Newcastle? I think what it does is it gives hope and encouragement to, to, to other young players in the, in the region, or possibly throughout the country to be honest, because there's a lack, you see a lack haven't you, of the development of the Premier League, in particular with foreign players um, uh, starting to make the claim and, be, and being the mainstay of a number of teams. Where you've seen the likes of Sean come through and actually make a real statement when he's been playing, he hasn't just flitted in for one or two games and then been then been left out again. He's made a real statement, you know, being mentioned by by Gary by Gary Lineker in his tweets. Alan Shearer congratulating him, uh, player player of the. Uh, Play the match, match of the day, yeah. January, yeah. young so players. I, I think what it does, it gives people um, a, a, maybe a, ho a hope, a belief that actually there is an opportunity, there is an avenue to go through and play at the highest level. This isn't the first time I've heard of Sean Longstaff. Back in 2016, I recognised his talents with the under 23s. I was given a video out talking about the players that I could go for and Sean was one of them. And then I also went to interview Lee Ryder and asked his opinion back in 2016 on Sean Longstaff. That is my tip, it's Sean Longstaff. If the way he keeps going on, he could potentially be the new star from Newcastle. Hopefully, fingers crossed. He's come from North Shields Juniors originally, who've done a great job with him down there. Um, and you know, he's come in the academy, he's gone through all the age levels, under 11, all the way to under 18, now in the reserves. Uh, got See the one? Yeah, hard to say. You, you ask my boys who their favourite player is in the Premier League, and they'll tell you it's Sean Longstaff. So they're noticing him. Um, my older boys are noticing him. Um, they're following him. They're on the Instagrams. I mean, he, he's just he, he is inspiring. Um, all all the kids and the club really and the coaches. One of the things that helps that as well is every year, I mean, we've got something like 550 kids that come and play in the teams here. Every year we organise a presentation night or two presentation nights at the end of the season where every player gets a medal, every player gets a trophy, they all get on the stage and they all get a round of applause. Uh, and over the years that's developed where um, the likes of Sean and Owen and Matty and Lewis. Um, and there's a lot more, there's about 12 to 15 that yeah, come on the night that are, are, are in the academy 15 system. boys and girls are in different academies, they all come back and they help dish out the trophies and they have a chat with the kids and they'll sign and get the pictures taken and it's really important. Uh, a, it gives, it gives the, the, the players in the club something they can aim for, something a bit more to be proud of about that, somebody who's one of their own that's, 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 moved, that's moved forward um, and, got, and got to that level. But as you said, it, it's, they don't forget where they've come from, yeah? Um, the, and they'll I, come and put the, that the, time in. They turn up year in, year out, um, and I, I love seeing them up on that stage, uh, and the kids do, and the kids go up there, and obviously you have your special awards, and the hand the special awards out, and the kids they just can't get up, wait to get up there, no matter who they are, if they're an under 14 academy player, it, it's just inspirational for all the little kids, um, and like I say, they do it year in, year out, and they're a real credit to themselves and the club. So it's really important that the lads, however far they go in their career, remember where they came from. That's really, really important with the coaches. Can't stress enough. Sean, as we've seen a little bit earlier on in the VT, was scoring a lot of goals and it was getting recognised. He went out alone then to kill Marnock in Blackpool and you've seen him score there against St. Patrick's and it was thought that Sean would go out alone and it was rumoured that he'd go out alone to Portsmouth, which never materialised. 
but he stayed with the first team. He learned, and injuries helped Sean break through with that first team. He scored his first goal against Blackburn in the FA Cup, and injuries kept him in the side. It wasn't just because of injuries, though. His form was absolutely phenomenal. One of the world's best managers, Pep Guardiola, came out and said that he, his midfield, his world-class midfield, could not cope with Isaac Hayden and in particular Sean Longstaff and he's recently went on to score against Burnley he's picked up several man of the matches what a couple of months it's been for Sean Longstaff unbelievable I think there's obviously uh, the, the lads in the dressing room wouldn't really let us get ahead of myself and to be honest it's it's a lot of their work probably more than than mine that's I think I just because I'm coming through, I'm getting noticed a little bit more, which is nice. But I think obviously the the staff and, and the players, everyone's working really hard. And I think the last month we've 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 been really good. And even the the games we're having picked up points in, we've we've been so close to getting something and could be a little bit higher. But no, everyone's everyone's pretty happy at the minute. And there's a a feel good factor around the club. I think you can feel that when you you hear the atmosphere, you see the fans and um, new signings is 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 amazing. So I think everyone's on a bit of a high at the minute. So it's about us on the pitch making that last as, as long as possible. Sean has been far too humble, too honest there. I know he's keeping his feet on the ground, but his progression has been absolutely outstanding. So I want to know from Keith and Simon, what the characteristics, what was the personalities of the lads when they were a lot younger? Sean, when, Sean, when he was here, um, was a very, um, a very emotional, positive kind of player, wanted to win games all the time, he's really passionate, it's probably the best way to describe him. Um, you know, really wanted to win games. Um, we, had, we did have one incident where he was really passionate in a game. The team were winning one 0 Other team equalised with a minute to go. Um, uh, he had to be brought off the pitch for a little bit. Of, you know, for a few seconds he wanted to go back on. He went back on. The ball was put on the centre circle and he smashed it in the top of the goal to win two one. Yeah, um, and he came away happy from that game. Uh, we actually think they changed the rules in the league from there that you couldn't score direct from a from a from a from a, from a, from a goal kick, yeah, or from a uh, from a kick off. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Okay. yeah. Um, Matty, Matty's um, very little character as well. Really determined, yeah. Um, uh, Lewis, uh, Lewis, when he was here, very, very, very quick, fast player. Yeah, very quiet, but got on with the game. Uh, and Owen, Owen was a. Uh, he was a very sturdy, skillful centre half, a bit of a Bobby Monkey kind of character, um, but all in the all in their own in their own ways of where uh, we're just uh, we're, we're great, great individuals. Yeah, and they follow the club on Twitter. Um, they, get, they get a little bit of mention every now and again from us, yeah, from our Twitter expert Keith. Yeah, um, uh, and they always respond. Um, so it's it's just it's really really nice that they that the they haven't just walked away and forgotten about the roots. It's, it's e brilliant. That even even you, you have you have cup finals at the end of the season, and whenever there's a a cup final and, and North Shields are there, they're, they're there supporting supporting the team down at um, Percy Park, whether it be here. Um, they're all it's just in their blood, isn't it? But you've got the, the, you've got Sh uh, Sean and Matty's nephew Jack. He plays here for the under 12s, so you'll often you'll often see them standing in his touchline. Yeah, Sean gets a little bit more attention now, obviously. Yeah, yeah, from from there. But you know, it's they're just it's I guess it's, it still feels like the part of the club. Yeah, even though they've they've, they've gone on and, and and done really well from a, a professional football perspective. So North Shields have done themselves proud. They've got Lewis Cass. Matty Longstaff and Owen Bailey currently in the under 23s for Newcastle and now they have one of their own how far can he go he's a regular at Newcastle can he then take the next step can he get into that full England squad we'll have to see but what is next for North Shields they are producing the talent what is next for this club I think the, the next step for us is to try and is to try to get better at what we're doing yeah, to provide an opportunity for kids of all abilities to, to, to come and play football and those players that uh, show that extra ability, that show that desire to want to move on to be able to provide a platform for them to try and do that and achieve what they want to achieve. We firmly believe that the talent is there in the North East. That talent needs nurtured. That talent needs to be given a chance. Proof is in the pudding that Sean Longstaff has made it. You need to give the local lads more of an opportunity. The FA, the Premier League and the clubs have to enforce this. This is the future 
of football, local talent. It needs to be. Thank you for watching. Thank you to Keith. Thank you to Simon. And also thank you to Fordy 